So welcome to um, the May invitation to get creative. Um, and last month's invitation was about looking closely. No, last week, last month's one was about making terraria. So um, if you have made a terrarium and um, you'd like to share a photo on the club, we'd love to see how it's going. Um, we've been looking, previously we looked closely at moss. This month we've been looking really closely at moss. Um, and I'm gonna pass over to Kat, who's gonna talk a little bit about the adventure we had at the University of Plymouth. Great, yeah, I'm gonna share my screen because I've got some photos to show you. Uh, show you. I've put them in a PowerPoint. So if I just... Um, loaded up then hopefully that will hopefully that will work mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you'll be able to see them so come on with the technology there we go hopefully you can see this so we um received a bit of funding to give us about 30 hours of time with the electron micros microscope at Plymouth University so there's no charge to us to um for this project and we just thought it'd be a really good way to look at mosses really extremely close up um so first of all the moss it's a very small sample of moss and it's put into liquid nitrogen to freeze it and then it's coated in a gold substance which allows the photographs through the electron microscope to be taken it's sort of put in a vacuum within the microscope um, so they did that bit for us and they also um, tried to wash the moss to see if they could find any small animal species in it um, and then Jenny and I went in so you can see in the on my top right there's six samples of moss from different locations so we had Harford, we had Chalicum Farm, we had Tall Royal which is near Princetown, we also had some moss from a drain and we also had another a moss from Plimbridge Woods so a selection of sites and species and it's sort of frozen if you like and coated in gold so these tiny samples that go inside the electron microscope so i've just got a selection of photos that jenny and i took um, to show you what we found and then the microscope just takes in black and white so all the images are black and white you can kind of false color them but these are what we saw on the machine on the day so you could get a yeah, so oh. the, te the textures and the patterns are amazing. And what bits of the moss these are, <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe Naomi would be able to, to share more. And you could zoom really closely into the structures to see the different parts of the moss. Um, and a lot of the moss we had was sphagnum moss. And they were the better samples, actually. The, the moss that came from the drain I think it was maybe, well, I think it was from a drain in Crediton, so near Naomi's, that the that wasn't such a good quality sample, really. So anyway, I'll, I've got about 10 photos to show you. So is that where water is stored? Oh, yeah, so this, the, the technician we met <laughs> uh, was quite impressed with himself that he'd managed to actually get a cut through of just a single piece of moss. He'd actually got a neat cut it's through of one plant. Of it. So, um, yeah, so you can really see the detail. I think I've got a zoom in of, of that. So, yeah, I don't think he was, I think he was surprised. He surprised himself that he got this neat cut through so we could see the structure. Is that, is that sphagnum? Uh, yes, I think all my images today. That's so Jenny, Jenny and I went in to take photos and uh, it's hard to know what you're looking at and what takes a good photo. Uh, I've never ever used an electron microscope before. Uh, but the best photos we took were of the better samples and the better samples were definitely the sphagnum. So this is sphagnum, definitely. I love the patterns and the, oh, yeah. the leaves. And, the, and it just makes you realise how it holds that amount of water. When when you think about moss holding so much water, all those kind of pockets. It's just it's another like a honeycomb inside of a hive, mm -hmm. couldn't it? The way that the cells are formed, it looks like the inside of a hive mm -hmm. almost. Is yeah, it's just another example of how nature repeats its patterns. Isn't that phenomenal? Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that so much. Yeah. It's amazing. We'll keep going. Wow. So now I've got a different, oh. yeah, different kind of surface structure. So yeah. any idea what we're looking at now? 
No, so we Moth. want to go, well, Moth, <laughs> we want to go, we're going back in in a few weeks' time with Naomi, who hopefully will have more of an idea of different parts of the moss that we're looking at. Jenny and I, I think, had an eye for patterns and textures. It's very hard to see because you can't really even zoom out to see the whole sample on this tiny little thing. It's very hard to get a feeling of what exactly you're looking at. I, I think some of the later photos, maybe it, you can see the shapes that are more obviously moss. And you, yeah. you click, you yeah. click on the oh. image, kind of at random to some extent, because then you mm. you zoom right in and then spend quite a lot of time focusing it, and it's it's total luck as to quite where the mouse ends up. Then you click, and um, at times we were a little disheartened with kind of going, oh, it all looks the same, and then we'd click somewhere else, and it'd be, wow, look at that, you know, what are the chances that we'd found different different elements? And textures are beautiful, aren't they? Just yeah. beautiful. I think this was sample six, and Jenny and I were like, we've looked at five samples, and this one <laughs> looks the same. And then um, mm -hmm. we were like, well, maybe we'll just look around the edges so you have the contrast of the, that's maybe Jenny's artistic eye. We're like, let's look around the edges so you get the contrast with the, the sort of sample, whatever the moss has been mounted on, and then you can really see the shapes and the patterns. Yeah, bit. can you, um, just at the bottom, I'm looking at all the info at the bottom, mm -hmm. and right mm -hmm. in the middle tells, uh, if I'm correct, um, correct me if I'm not, um, how many times it's been um, magnified. So that picture says it's magnified 37 times. Yes, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Whereas That's some right. of the other ones before were magnified hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Back. Yeah, um, if I go back, yes, yeah, so 230 times. Yeah. And if I go back, 500 times. And it, again, it's quite easy to sort of feel lost as to how far in or out. So yeah. I think um, it is one of those, it was it was Kat and my first time for, for going in and using the kit and working our way through the, the complex controls to get the focus right. Um, you almost yeah, need to go back well. again. It's, it's like visiting yeah. a woodland, isn't it? You kind of want to go back the second time once you've got your bearings a little bit, um, and then you then you really see the wood for the trees. Or yeah, we had like a sort of fifteen step list of what buttons to press and when to focus, zoom out, <laughs> save. <laughs> yeah, so very quite complicated. Um, really great experience, but quite complicated to to get familiar with the controls and and the focus. So that um, white bar at bottom right, that is mm -hmm. the that is two hundred microns or yes. point yeah. two of a point two of a millimeter. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Wow. Yeah, Thank that's you. helpful. So yeah, so not point two. Mm. Yeah. So, Guessing that's what that white bar is. Yes. That's that's mm. yes, the, you've got the micro yeah. Yeah, you're right. So if we the next one which was much right. So that's 0.05 of a millimeter is that white bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most zoomed in because then we were on oh, this to get this. We had quite a few of this with this sort of what looked like holy type texture. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're coming, and again, this one quite well zoomed in. And then some of them we're pulling back out to see more of the patterns of the moss. Which is yeah, so we're, we're seeing. We're basically seeing individual sh cells, but what's interesting to me is that um, moss itself is sells itself as a a plant evolved 450 million years ago as a very um, all its cells being very simple and very one cell thick, you know, one um, one membrane thick around the outside of the cell, so they can absorb the water and the nutrients and pollutants and all those things very easily and yet when you zoom in you see that complicated yeah. there's still a highly complicated machine if you like evolved machine for dealing with yeah. all those molecules I'm just enjoying that that's what I'm doing but I don't know what I'm looking at particularly other than their individual cells and their surfaces and cut through whereas this here is um in individual leaflets of the moss but i don't know what species i don't know where this was from well i when i finish presenting i'll show because this is sample six which i think could be the harford 
So it might be the Shallowford one. I'll check in a minute. I think some of mine are more similar. So this is this is this is this be this sample again. But this is when uh, Jenny was like, let's just look for interesting shapes and patterns. So similar. Um, same That's the thing. artist in her coming out right yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Six, so, six was Tor Royal. A Tor Royal. Okay. Um, Five. Yeah. Yeah, those shapes. That... But I've got yeah, beautiful. Shapes. I've got a whole yeah. We we took about twelve photos per sample. A few but, more on that really interesting cross sectional one that I showed you at the start. I keep going. But we were in there in there for quite a long time. I I had to disappear at one point to go and go and run a couple of chores around Plymouth, and I was quite glad to walk away and kind of stretch my eyes because. You do when when we're saying about when Kat's saying about looking for some different shapes or, or what have you, I just felt like you kind of immerse yourself in it so much that you, you really do have to step away at, at some point. Poor Kat stepped outside to eat her eat her sandwich and it heated down with rain on it. So, yeah, <laughs> nice break. yeah, we I think we did half past nine till half past two. Yeah, so it's a really long, long time, time looking very and, slow to focus yeah, each photograph. Yeah, it took quite yeah. a long time. That's really, really zoomed in. That's yeah. 900. Yeah. And we were really interested in the sort of, um, sort of, uh, for a technical term, splodges uh, that you could see then on this surface. Uh, um, and like the individual, you know, we're not sure what we're looking at spores there, the individual shapes on the, on the surface. They could be, they could be anything from um, little nematodes to spores. Oh, yeah. to, uh, like the one on the right looks mm. like a potential nematode, but it could be just a piece of a, a piece of cell, couldn't it? A little bit of broken up. But I think all those holes are are the holes that it's absorbing the water through. Mm. Mm. Not sure how many more. Oh yeah. Oh the strange inside. Yeah. Strange yeah. patterns of stuff inside. Just yeah. Yeah, we're really zoomed in here. Oh so we we should show these to um, someone like Conrad or Paul Lunt or some somebody to just just. Are you, are you going to share these on the um, forum? The photos yeah. themselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was it. That was my last one. So go back to that one just for a while, mate. Mm. Yeah, we um, wanted to sort of share them today, and then we'll share we'll share uh, on the club, and um, we've got as I say, we've got about. Well, at least sixty more than that images, seventy images. Really? And that lot. So we need to find a way to sort of share them, and we're going to go back. Are you going to have an exhibition <laughs> at some point? Well, yes. Oh. We're hoping to have an exhibition of everyone's um, artworks uh, responding to the moss inspiration and the moss ideas in, oh, in November know. at the Theatre Royal in Plymouth. Okay. And we'll know, we'll know more about that, won't we, uh, mm. at the end of next week or end of yeah. this week. Oh. Yeah. Thank you to go. Thank you. That was fascinating. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Lovely to see. Um, and we, um, so as I said, they what we wanted them to do was to wash the moss to see if they could get any uh, fauna off the moss, <laughs> possibly tardigrades or other species. So from some moss washing, <laughs> um, they found some nematodes. So we're hoping to, um, when we go back in in June, we may be able to get some photos of, of these, there's only a couple of nematodes, but see if we can get some photos of that. The moss washing wasn't actually very easy. Um, and they spoke to a tardigrade ex expert who thought that the moss was too, too layered in its surface to get these creatures off by washing it. So that, that side was less successful, um, but hopefully when we return, there'll be some nematode pictures to share as well later in June. Mm. So we've been taking... It's amazing, different... just going smaller and smaller and smaller. It's fascinating, and, but so, yeah, as you say, so beautiful. It reminds me of leaky pipes. You know how you, when you, um, for watering, you often have pipes with holes in them and it, it's all... Yeah, it looks, looks a bit like that for absorbing the water and releasing it. So. Well, I think it's it's quite a regular project that they offer. So any small to medium business can apply to them for this free 
funding. There's lots of different organisations. So they've worked with Pollenize, looking at pollen on bees' legs. We looked at like how seaweed attaches to concrete for artificial reef structures. But then they've got businesses that are just looking at like coffee beans or botanicals and gin, ice cream. But any any business can apply to them to have this sort of look. Years at. years ago, when I was doing my um, art degree, I did a thing with the hospital, and I had them. They I did a whole series based around beauty and disease which was basically recreating uh, cancer cells, microscopic cancer cells. And they did they did some slides for me. My dad had had skin cancer and they did some of his slides and like went and zoomed in for me so I could do some of those paintings. I find it absolutely fascinating how cells can be so beautiful regardless of where they come from if that makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. even within cancer itself you know the, the cells themselves the cellular structure was just stunning to look at but the actual skin cancer is horrific um but when i look at, look at a piece of moss I, I don't get all excited thinking oh my gosh what a beautiful piece of moss i think oh that's a really useful piece of moss because i know what it does now whereas a long time ago I probably wouldn't they do but it's now having seen the cellular structure of it the build-up of it you kind of get an even as an artist i get an even bigger appreciation for the beauty of it now more than I did before. I think it, it, it that some of those photos just amazing for me to look mm. at. I think it's beautiful, mm. absolutely beautiful. When we were there, Glenn was talking about um, they were doing something to do with was it to do with baby wipes, cat? Something to do with yeah. so they they often do work on projects that have a an environmental slant. Mm. Um, and Chloe Nemi and I were in Kenrin at the ESI there last week. Um, and we were talking to one of the researchers and he was saying about different ways, techniques for cutting solar cell and that he'd noticed there was a, a significant difference in um, output and efficiency of the solar cells, depending on how they were cut. And when they, they then looked at them through the electron microscope and um, some of them looked incredibly clean cut and that, you know, usually you'd think, oh, that's what we're, we're going for. But actually those were the ones that lost the efficiency, whereas the ones that had a rougher edge didn't lose that efficiency. So when you look at things differently, when you look up close, you you see, you appreciate it in a totally different way and, and realize. Um, and so we've that, been- oh, Am I right in that I would just wanted to reiterate that's what our invitation for this month mm. is, is for you to have a look close, close to the structures that you can find in mosses and see what that brings up for you and explore that with your own making or word or... I've got about a million things flowing through my head right now. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, well, all these things. Share them. That would be great. One of the things that I came away thinking about looking at those was that kind of hole and, and structure thing of when you cut your paper um, and thinking about the way that it then absorbs um, I don't know, it makes those pockets for, for liquids. Um, so I had a, a National Trust magazine come through the um, the door yesterday, and I will read the majority of it, but there were a couple of pages that were, were nice and green. And so I ended up playing. And then also thinking about textures. Yeah. I really liked that kind of cellular. So this is just mm. the, 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 the kind of curved creases on it playing with and you get some really nice effects then with the shadow where you can't really see it from a distance that well it's showing up quite nicely with the light here I was thinking it might not um but just by by creasing and folding with a simple piece of paper you can you can make something that's quite beautiful as well and, and represents those images mm. and then Chloe's been getting creative with some paper as well I have yes I've had some scraps of green paper and um so I did some twisting and turning of the paper and then sticking. So these are, this is, this is a, a crepe paper that um, if you cut into a strip and then you um, cut yourself um, some kind of leaflet bits and then twist them, you can get some nice um, so kind of leafy, <laughs> leafy um, sort of maybe well, 
yeah mm -hmm. so that one that one was that sort of thing and that's wrapped around wire and glued around wire and then I decided to do some that weren't um so uh weren't twisted so these are just leaflets that are then glued they're just a uh, kind of round shape and the nice thing about this crepe paper when I um you can cut a round shape and it's it's quite nice but it's not amazingly interesting because it's quite flat but crepe paper you can kind of push it and pull it around and you quite quickly can make yourself a much more curved interesting leaf shape mm -hmm. so that was quite fun and then I got a bit enthusiastic and I thought I found myself a rock in the garden and um, yeah. then started sticking mm -hmm. some of the crepe paper mm -hmm. on it to try and make a sort of papery mossy mossy space that's lovely. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So those were really simple things for playing around with that structure of yeah. moss with paper. It'd be really great to see what other things people come up with. Do you want to share your recipes now, Chloe, as well? Because yeah, Chloe that would, that would be really nice. Really nice. Feel That's hungry nice. with her creations, photos <laughs> of her creations. I want to go around and touch yeah, the coming. <laughs> As I said, um, I personally think any making is improved by the being accompanied by baked goods of <laughs> any form. <laughs> so, um, I ha uh, was experimenting with mossy food, and obviously, like moss isn't a good thing to eat on its own. No one should be eating moss, but um, but obviously the colours and the shapes of it are quite attractive. So. Um, uh, on the on our art and energy website, I've shared <laughs> a blog with currently one of the recipes, but I will add some of the other recipes in as well. So, um, and I'll post this when I've finished writing the recipes up onto Bury the Giant Club. So, what I made was some matcha and coconut macaroons with chocolate and lime because I wanted to have something that was vegan and gluten-free and kind of mossy and then mm. this is one of those kind of protein balls oh. I don't know whether you've eaten one of those protein balls they're basically made with dates and nuts and seeds and on this one I've put desiccated coconut around the outside that I did color with green food coloring so um it's kind of green on the inside but it's also green on the outside and that's also vegan and gluten-free oh. And this one is a tahini cookie. And on the top, it's got pistachio <laughs> crunch. Um, so I'll show you what I've done for writing the recipe up. Oh, that's a picture of my lad eyeing up the macaroons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so there's some, this, this one's got vegan condensed milk, desiccated coconut, vanilla extract, matcha powder dark chocolate and lime zest and there's some steps for how to get the willing food tester by the looks of things <laughs> <laughs> most important yeah. job trying the food <laughs> so that's one of them and obviously i'll put the recipes for the other one up there as well or the other two up there as well but um i was quite enjoying you know taking a standard recipe because obviously macaroons are a standard recipe and then trying to kind of toy around with it to get that mossy mossy bit for it too and um yeah they thought that they were bonkers and they <laughs> so, so please do try the recipes or add any other recipes that you fancy as well that's, that's brilliant I, there was um i think um, I knew someone that used to use spinach a lot in like food colouring as well to make things nice and green. Mm. Um, just a little bit goes a long way, apparently, and you can put it in ice cream. And, um, yeah, and I think um, kale and basil are quite nice for getting that greenness too. Yeah. And, um, I was thinking, you know, that chimichurri sauce? That's, that always reminds me of kind of mossiness because it's all 
chunky and green and and I personally love the taste of that so I would layer it on everything but I do think that a, a sweet bake is is uh, from my preference for accompanying a crafting thing <laughs> yeah 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 I was just I was just thinking of a three course mossy meal <laughs> Mm. With pest. Jane with just said and the mole sauce too. Jane, what's mole sauce? I don't know anything about mole sauce. Well, she's that. putting it up. Um, also, I made a cake, um, little cakes with um, courgettes. Mm. So, oh. yeah, you can use the courgettes for the inside and then um, what you call it, grate the outside for putting on the icing. Um, so, yes, I was just thinking, Lorna, as I visited your tea room last Wednesday, <laughs> I could just see inspirations for uh, your tea room. <laughs> Makes it like, like little quiche. I think a lot, a lot of our customers are very conservative. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Um, yeah, I was they like thumbs. They like coffee and walnut you know and, and I don't know if we should do a sort of mom's take on that but you know, <laughs> you know, it's a lovely idea I think um I mean it, you know perhaps if you warned people that it was going to be a, a sort of moss inspired baking mm. day they might uh you know they might be up for it for many ones for them to try so they paid mm. a little bit more for their coffee and walnut, but that <laughs> with the coffee and walnut, they would have a little taste of the had a little moss bit of... inspired whatever it was that was inside. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they look they look really great, those recipes. It would be it would be fun to to do something a bit a bit different. Yeah. Or moss moss soup. Has anyone made moss soup? <laughs> Not moss, but I'm always making nettle soup and a wild garlic soup. Mm, yummy. Yeah. I'm just gonna bring an end to our recorded session. It doesn't mean that the rest of us can't stay a bit longer. Um a reminder to anybody that's watching this video that there will be another one next month. Um I don't know the exact date of that. I'm looking at cat. Um, so please do come and join in if you're able and um, if you're only able to pop in for a little bit that's absolutely fine it's a totally relaxed chilled out catch up over a cup of tea we've had people coming and going and um, we kind of start off with the first half an hour or so of, of just catching up and chatting and then we do this little bit of recorded to share um, and if you are inspired or hopefully you're inspired by what we've talked about today then um, please do share your makes and your creations and your questions and your ideas it might be you've got an idea but you've not got this I don't know you you're not confident to, to do it but you might inspire somebody else so please share on the club um, we'd love to to see what you're up to um, and we'll have more details of that exhibition in November in Plymouth coming soon um, so we will be inviting you all once we know a a bit more about what we're asking you to do we'll be inviting you to to get making but get making in the meantime and um yeah, so when, we'll... when will the photos go up onto the site onto the club so site those will be oh let me have a look um ah, i've lost the club i've got it open here i've got so many tabs open um i think those are going to be under invitation to join in okay. and um if i share the screen Oh, it's not letting me share. What's going on? I'll end, I'm going to just, I'll finish our recording. I'll just say it's Monday, the 26th of June for our next member <laughs> session. So see you then. <laughs>